Hi, this is Robert Gephardt with How to Be a Successful Freelance Translator. And this is the first lesson, the part that I like to call the pre-game. Now, the pre-game is the stuff that you need to do before you get started. I know you're probably at this point ready and itching to get started right away. And that's the exact motivation you need at this point. So these steps might either seem like a waste or seem like something you can get to later. But trust me, you want these so that the rest can be flowing smoothly. You want these things ready. And uh, so I divided it up into uh, days and later on it'll be divided into uh, money as well because certain w websites or other places where you can sign up for might cost something. So I tried to make it as easy as possible and um, I divided up. So this is just day one. This is what you need to concentrate on day one. Resume, specializations, and photo or a picture of yourself. So let's start. Day one. It's one day maximum or half a day maximum if you already have a resume. I know that many of you do. Um, now, and these days in general, I'm also quite generous. You might be able to do day one and, and day two all in one day if it's a weekend and you have the whole day available or something like that. But either way, feel free to follow along just with, uh, you know, just starting on day one and just uh, taking all day to do this and to do it right. Now, the first thing you'll need is an updated resume. Second point is a list of the services you offer. And this is different from the resume, we'll get into it. And, uh, and then you want a good picture of yourself. Um, and you know, which means uh, not a glamour professional one, but one where you look like a decent human being. So let's start with the updated resume. First of all, uh, we should point out that this is not the most important part, let's say. Uh, this is uh, actually not the first thing that the clients will see, but obviously you do want a resume and it uh, helps to have one detailing any translation or writing or associated material you might have. And uh, this can range from uh, a personal blog or published articles or anything in between. Um, you also want to show you're a real person. The problem is if people find you online, you're quite anonymous and they might not know, you know, if you're hiding anything or if they can trust you, if you'll just disappear or something like that. So you want to show that you can be reached. And this means that you list, you know, real institutions, schools, places you've worked, stuff like that. Stuff that seems traceable. If you have a LinkedIn account, obviously link to that. But people at the beginning, they just want to know that they can trust you. And so you kind of... Um, Want to, want to be able to show that. Also, you want your resume to be in both your source and your target languages, just in case you might have clients in either or, and uh, so it helps to have this. Now, um, especially when you're starting out, uh, one of these languages, most likely your source language, might not be your native tongue. So don't be shy about hiring someone to proofread it and make sure it's written correctly. Also remember that different countries have different conventions for writing resumes. So uh, you might want to look up a few examples of written resumes in that language first to be sure. And, um, and once again, you know, feel free to hire someone for 10, 20 bucks to uh, look over the resume and make sure that it's written correctly because you don't want mistakes on it. And last, but definitely not least, remember that no one likes reading resumes. It's a, basically a general rule. Uh, nobody enjoys reading the line by line bullet points and all your, you know, carefully crafted words and expressions. Uh, no, and I know this sounds a bit, you know, you put a lot of work into it and no, I'm telling you that no one likes reading it, but unfortunately it's the truth. So just keep this in mind. Uh, keep in mind that you want to get to the point quickly. You want to be able to sell your skills and experience that relate to translation. And obviously, you know, you're applying as a translator. You want this to be typo free. Um, and you want it to be well, uh, well written. Uh, that pretty much covers it for updated resume. As I said, many of you might already have one, but uh, I thought I should cover what, what people will be looking for. So, you know, even if you have one, you might want to tweak it a little bit just to make sure that it's, that it's correct uh, for being a freelance translator. Now, the next point is a list of services. This is separate from your resume and it's also mo more important. This will be the first thing that any potential client will see here you want to make sure that you can offer any services they require. You know, you have to picture basically a client who has nothing to do with translation, you know, but they need, a, say, a new website and their boss said they need a new website in some language and they don't know what to look for. So, you know, when they go see a search, they're going to find you and they're going to, uh, you know, then judge if they want to hire you or not to translate their website. Now, my recommendation here, at least at the beginning, if you, if you feel a bit lost, is to do it this way. Basically, to have a narrow list of languages. You don't want to say that, you know, you can do Portuguese and Spanish and French and Italian and um, et cetera, et cetera. If you feel more comfortable with, say, just Portuguese and English, 
then just have Portuguese and English. Uh, later on, you can see if you want to do variations, but for now, I will start with a narrow list of languages. However, I would have a wider list of specializations. Again, this is just at the beginning. By specializations, I mean, you know, in business and finance and uh, or legal or history or religion or travel or stuff like that. I would, uh, I would do this because at the beginning, you're not sure people what, what people are looking for. Also, you might not really be sure what you're good at. You might be really good at something that you had no clue about. And so um, be rather generous with your specializations, let's say. However, having said that, you obviously do not want to list topics you're not comfortable translating in. If you, know, if you don't know much about biology, then you don't want to list that as one of your specializations because uh, you, know, you definitely don't want to be doing a bad job because you don't know what you're talking about. It Something like that will definitely show. Now here I wanted to show an example of what I have. Actually, well, this is a bit dated. This is from when my book came out. But yeah, uh, you can see on the top that I only have two languages, English and Italian. So I keep it very simple. You know, I target English and Italian. If uh, someone needs an English to Italian translation, but they see French and Portuguese and Spanish as well, they might start wondering, you know, how good I can be in all these languages. Uh, but English and Italian gives it right to the point. But here, you know, in specializations, you can see I have 10 uh, specialties. I have, uh, you know, a couple listed there. And then, uh, and then in the also works in section, and this is from pros.com. It's a website that we'll get to later. I'll explain about it. But, you know, they, they let you list many more and I have many more listed. I think basically the, uh, the maximum there. And, you know, if someone needs a translation done and say slang, you know, they'll see that I have slang, that I also work in slang. And so it shows up there. And I think um, it's good to have it a wide variety here. Uh, just because you don't know what people are going to target at the beginning. Third point, a picture of yourself. Now, this is actually more important than you think. Right at the beginning, you're going to be establishing trust, like I mentioned before. And this means that, once again, people find you online, uh, you're anonymous, and so people right away, even before the skills, they want to know that they can trust you. They want to know that, that you're someone that, uh, you know, that really exists and that they can turn to and that won't just disappear. So their first impression is going to be very quick and very decisive. And your picture has a lot to do with this. So I would, well, I wouldn't take, you know, don't take a glamour shot or a professional photo or anything like that, but you also don't want anything resembling a mug shot. I would make it a slightly candid. Don't worry too much about the quality. And on any provider's website, it won't be that big. It'll be maximum, I'd say 300 by 300 pixels, probably less. So uh, just have something small and easy. Also keep in mind, this can be done right away. Uh, the picture is not a reason to delay getting started. If you're on a laptop, chances are, you know, if you're working at a coffee shop, you can turn on your webcam and take a picture of yourself working at your computer with a cup of coffee right there in front of you. After all, this is the Im image clients like to have of their freelancers. So, I mean, feel free to uh, just show yourself that way. Otherwise, you can look through some old pictures. I'm sure you can probably find something, something where you look a bit human, let's say. You know, you don't want to be stiff as a board. You also don't want to be drunk as a skunk. Now, I've, I've also been told that sometimes smiling or at least looking at the camera conveys more trust. I'm not sure about this. You can get a general idea. Should you look at the camera, look away, whatever you feel more comfortable with. I don't, again, I, you shouldn't delay too much. I've probably even talked about it a bit too much. Just take a picture of yourself, however it's easiest, and put it up there. You definitely do not want to be without a picture. And that pretty much covers it for day one. I would say at this point in time, make sure you have these steps and they're done correctly. Uh, once they are, you can feel free to move on to day two, but you don't have to do so right away. You can wait until the next day to do it.